Be a Christian Radio begins in 3, 2, 1. Hello everybody, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time you may be listening to this, welcome back to Be a Christian radio it's been a while i know i know it's been a while since i made podcasts on this channel and there is a reason that happened and i'm going to be explaining why in the very next episode which is going to come out today as of the time i'm recording this i have two podcasts i'm going to be doing um the first one i'll be having it with my good friend john hi john um good morning I'm fine. Good, good morning how are you um all is well fine. welcome <laughs> fine. you know it's been a while yeah i, I know i know welcome back to be a christian radio i have missed you <laughs> you left me on this podcast man and you know you were needed on this podcast you know been busy all the while busy doing mm. some other thing i understand i understand yeah. considering the situation that is going on in nigeria right now everyone is really busy in one way or the other oh. yeah so john there is an important thing i want us to talk about today and this is something that I see uh, it is not being given much attention to in Christianity. And this is important because there is no point if we're going to call ourselves a Christian and we're not going to talk about this kind of matter, right? And it's something that has, that has, that has been occurring consistently over and over and over and over. And people are not putting attention to this. So I want you and I to dive into the apostasy of Christians. Why Christians are leaving the gospel? Why are they leaving um, what we know as Christianity? There are a, not a huge number of them, by the way, compared to the people that are living Islam. There is more and more people living Islam compared to Christianity. However, there is still a number of people that left the church and there are some that just left the faith completely. So I want us to look into this matter and to see what um, what all this is all about. So without further ado, let us begin. So John, tell me, what do you think about um, this matter? Do you have any insights that you think you can share about people living the faith? Yes, I guess we're talking about why they left. Mm. That is our major point. Um, yeah. There are different factors that made a lot of people come into the faith and leave. Um, I guess there are in all the factors, I'll be talking about only two factors. I don't know if you have more mm -hmm. to say, but if there be only that one I need to talk about, uh, um, it's now becoming a norm that people come into the faith after a while they get offended and they leave the faith. And um, they may not leave Christianity altogether why there are some that are actually living Christianity. So there are two categories, those mm -hmm. who are living the faith. And when they, left, when they left the faith, they left everything completely. They left what, everything that everything, concerns Christ. Yeah. Why some don't want to be Christians anymore? Mm. Like they don't want to be in that body, that mm. body that makes people call them a Christian anymore. Um, I don't know. I'll proceed in talking about the factors. Mm. Number one factor I think um, I'll talk about is the factor of unity. So, in saying that, you mean that there is no unity in the church? Yeah, when there is no unity, there tends to be divi a division. Division. In what sense? Uh, let me give you an example. Like, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. I was telling my friend, uh, you know, when there is no unity, people coming together and knowing our minds, it is easy for people to fizzle out of the faith. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And Jesus said, many will be offended. Yes. You know, but when there is unity... When we are together, we tend to know our faults and fails and we'll be able to work on it. Mm. So let me quickly talk about the factor of unity. You know, um, a lot of people feel they can do things alone. Like most times I see God talking to me like there was a, a piece God gave me recently that I'm working on. He said, when, when one can no longer go. I said, what does this mean? When one can no longer go? He said, there are times in life that one person can no longer move forward again. Mm -hmm. That you need the help of people that's why the bible say two are better, better than, than one. one for when he falls yes. the other will pick him up you know yes. um at times in faith a lot of people go through a lot of things that they don't share with people mm. and if you know the moment the the weight comes on them the mo when the weight becomes too much 
He begins to push them out of what they believe, out of what they once received. Now, not digressing from the point why they left. You know, we're talking about why certain people who believed, who were once in the in the faith, who were once on fire, why they deviated, why they left. And I'm talking about the factor of unity. You see, um, just as I earlier said, when a problem shared is, is half, is half, half, is half solved. solved. Yes, half let me solved. say that. Yes. You know, um, there are people who left the faith because of one thing or the other that they were going through. Mm. that they couldn't share with anybody and when the when the, the when the weight of it came they could not be mm -hmm. now if you as a brother or a sister you don't have somebody you are close to in the church or you don't have somebody you are close to in the in the christian body that you discuss things with and you people share things together that you rub minds with when situations come you are you are liable of going away a mm. tree cannot make a forest mm. when a tree is being amputated it's being removed that is the end of that tree what do I mean? If you are standing alone and you, you, a, a problem comes to weigh you, you are off the ground. So one of the reasons I feel people live is when they are not united with themselves. You imagine a um, set of people gave their life to Christ and they have been serving God together. But you discover that after a while, when division begins to set in, Mm. you see the devil begins to deploy you know we are still going to talk deep on this i'm just giving you this fact yeah, i understand one, the number understand. one factor because we're going to have time to really talk about this so um i wouldn't really go deep into in this unity but when we continue i'll be talking more about it so look at it that certain people gave their life to christ they were, they've been together for years they've been doing things together they've been having um, the same faith together but after a while you see that certain people among them begin to Part. And the moment they start parting, you will see that the strength in which they are standing before begins to reduce. The strength in which they, they, they believe begins to reduce. And that's why I see the Bible said, Apostle Paul said, Demas has forsaken me. Mm, why? I haven't loved, I haven't this, loved present, this present. present now, world, yes. the, the love of the world deviated him, removed him. But imagine they had been together. Hmm. I, I don't know what I get what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. It, it, the, 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 this breakage came. So that's the first point before I go deep into the second one is the the this this factor of fellowship. The factor of fellowship. The first one I talk about is factor of unity. When there's no un unity, you see people breaking off, you see them leaving. Why the second one is a factor of what? The fellowship. You know, um, I when I come to the Bible time, Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you, mm -hmm. as a branch cannot be a fruit of itself. Of it's it's right. abide in the branch. There's something mm -hmm. he said, He said, No more can you. Except, Except you, you abide, abide in me. me. Now, constant fellowship is what keeps us. Why a lot of people left is because of the fellowship. When there's break in fellowship, when there's break, when there's a breach, there there is tendency of somebody departing. Uh, John, on that fellowship case, I would like us to go a little bit deep in that. And a lot of people tend to, when they hear the word fellowship, they think it's going to church no, on no, Sunday, no, no, on Sunday yeah. and you know, we are, we are going to fellowship. So, right. so you don't go to fellowship, you participate in a fellowship, right? A fellowship, a fellowship is not a place, it is an act where people come together to 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 commune. An act of devotion to a particular thing. Yeah. Exactly. So I would like you to go a little bit deeper on that. When I talk about breaking fellowship, nobody should misunderstand this. You know, when I when we talk about fellowship, where people's mind go to, they just see a picture of people gathering in a church and in a particular <laughs> system. And that is very, it's, it's very common. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Honest. And <laughs> when I talk about break in fellowship, yes. the factor of fellowship, you see, um, when you are constant in something, you become what you do consistently. Mm. You become what you do. We are creatures of habit, you know. Mm -hmm. If you are this type that goes to God regularly, you find it hard to remove from Him. Yes, that's true. You see yourself being with Him all the while. The Bible says, when He called them, the first thing He did is He called them to be with Him, mm -hmm. that He might that He might teach them mm -hmm. before He send them. Now, the factor of unity is different from the factor of fellowship. The factor of unity is when you and a particular body is being together and it keeps you. But if, the, if that's not working, there will be this act of living. Why the factor of fellowship is, what the question is, what is keeping you? What is keeping you? What is your, what is, what is retaining you? When there is no consistent fellowship with God, you are doing something else. Yes, because you cannot be doing something else and still be in fellowship. The fellowship I'm talking about here is a walk with God, a particular routine. And also, um, John, I would even really like to point out because... Oftentimes also when we hear of fellowship, there are people that believe, oh, fellowship is not just going to church. 
Agreed. Yeah. But then there are also people that that think that fellowship is only with God. They forgetting that they can also have fellowship with their fellow men as Good. well. Yeah, like, that is why we are going to elab- we are going to be more elaborate so that people will understand. Mm-hmm. Well, so uh, rounding up this area of fellowship, I'm just stating the two factors because we've not really started talking on them. So this this in this in this concept of fellowship, I have tested this before. I've mm-hmm. tested it before. Um, when I see when when God seems far away, God cannot be far away. I think okay, when God is far away, who left? You are the one that left. <laughs> God doesn't leave you. That's so true. now you see why they left is the factor of fellowship the moment you begin to jeopardize what keeps you the moment you begin to jeopardize what keeps you 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 discover that you begin to stay far away from that thing and you know the end result of it mm. you become frustrated when you don't have when you avoid mm. you know if you start feeling empty within leave um leave leave um an empty plastic on on the mountain mm. what happens when yeah. the wind comes it takes the way just like um when you disconnect a pipe from the source it it's just you, only yeah. a matter of time before the reservoir runs out once God, the reservoir you runs it, out you it become becomes empty. Becomes out. that is where you see people feeling threatened to go mm. feeling threatened to leave so let because me stop it there the drive that is keeping them is no longer yeah. there so i don't know let me just give you a time to hear what you said before i know i understand so what were talking on the same issue right now i mean i have an alternative view to this okay. right so i from the aspect you're talking of you're talking about the people that are born again already yeah. and we're going to talk, be talking about the two phase we have already started with the people that are born again and there is another sect i would like us to talk about not now not now, but I pray I don't forget, which is the other sect of Christian. Mm. The first sect of Christians are people that are spiritual, that they they believe in God and they believe everything. They are born again. They've have an, an, an encounter with God. Either they've tasted the heavenly gifts, they've in one way or the other experienced God in their life. And they know this is legit because I felt it. Either I felt it physically or spiritually or in one way or the other, but they can testify that, no, 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 God is real. I have felt it, right? So, on that aspect, there is another place I wanted us to talk about again, all right? And that has to do with people that um, that refuse to grow. Yeah. So, you know... Um, one of the one of the essential thing, one of the things the Bible let us to know earlier on as a Christian is that we are babies. In when you become born again, the Bible says that as um, as sincere babes desire the as, sincere as milk of the babes, word. Sorry, as, as, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, the that you may grow thereby. And this is important because mm. many times we tend to forget that we are children in the kingdom. Right, and we ought to always, um, always be at the feet of the master, to desire more, to eat more, to take in more for ourselves. And I had a reason why I wanted to point this out because I have had a lot of people that refuse to grow, and because as long as you're not growing, it is only a matter of time before even the things you have believed in will start wavering in your mind. Hmm. So tell me, what do you think of that aspect? That, that is what, that's, that, this aspect you came up with is very beautiful. That's factor of growth. Hmm. You know, when you are not growing, when you are not growing, you are, you are going down. You know, what you said now struck my mind because so there are some people that what frustrated them, what made them leave was this factor of growth. Hmm. Imagine in the settings where you have been educated and uh, others are doing better than you do. Over time, you wouldn't see the reason why you should remain in that place. You'll be thinking of aborting, you'll be thinking of leaving. You get what I'm saying? So when people are not growing, when they are not growing, you know, when you are not growing to, into into spirituality, you are growing to decay. Mm, yes. Can I listen? We start taking Yeah, you are growing to decay. On. And when you are growing to decay, you cannot stay. Mm. That is another factor why people are leaving. You know, this topic is a very crucial one. Mm-hmm. We see people who carried the Bible yesterday. I could remember when I when I came into the faith after some years, a guy that I know in the streets, a regular guy, and I started, I people called me to come and see oh, that this guy is really bubbling now for God. When I saw him, I was happy that somebody too has come to join the faith. But I did something. One of the nights I called him. I said, young man, this thing you are doing, how long will it last? Mm. Are you ready for this? Do you know as I'm talking to you now? I met him a few days ago. He has he has dropped everything. One of these factors must have caused it. Might be the factor of growth. Mm. You know, when you are not growing, you are growing towards something else. If you are not growing towards God, you are growing towards something else. When you are growing towards God, you are growing 
your growth is a good one. Mm. But when you're not growing towards God, you are growing to decay because there is nothing mm. else you should grow towards if not God. The Bible says, and but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Lord. Mm. That was what Peter advised. Mm -hmm. So the factor of growth is also the and when you said it struck my mind to one other factor. Yeah, go ahead. The factor of the world system. The system of the world. Yes. Okay, so what what what's what about the world system? You know, um tribulations, a lot of things are coming and trials. up. And a lot of people will not be able to they may not be able to bear the 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 the, the pressure. That will come. Let's talk about the, the area of money. money. Even even before you talk about that, all right. So there is um, an understanding that as Christians, you are to face tribulations. Yeah. Now the Bible says this in every every way. Like literally in Matthew twenty four, Jesus said, uh, "You'll be persecuted of all nations for my name's sake." Name's sake. Yes. <laughs> in uh, First Timothy chapter six verse twelve, he said, "Yea, and all that will live." Godly in Christ must suffer persecution. Must. It's, it's a must. It's a must. You, you can't escape it. it, right? And I believe that. And this, this one, this part, John. I this part has not only to do with the person. You know, everything we've been talking about now has been about the person, the person, the person. There are other factors that I also want us to con consider, you which can come up with that. Uh, uh, which has to do with um, before we talk about the trials and temptation. Let's talk about the factor of organization in churches. And okay. this is a deep one, and I believe this is a very big reason why so many people leave churches. Hmm. Now, organization in the sense of we have today what is called a quote-unquote church. According to the Bible, churches are not buildings or organization. They are individuals. A person is a church. But today, even though the moment you tell Christians and say, look, you are not, uh, yeah, you are the church, not the building, they will tell you, yes, they know, but you still have to go to church. Like, you are still just contradicting yourself, right? Now, I'm not saying that you should not go to an organized place where you come together as a Christian and you worship and tie to yourself that, oh, we are of this sect. No problem with that. I'm not against that. But what I'm against and what I'm having issues with has to do with, um, with uh, organization where People are forced, indoctrinated, things that are not even scriptural. Mm. We are we are we are living in a time where people where they will tell you that, oh, our God is a good God, you ain't gonna suffer. You know? <laughs> God is gonna bless you, he's gonna give you money, is and we have so many false teachers that mm. teach this. And we have them in Nigeria a bunch. There is a, there is excess amount of them, right? They don't teach about the the things that has to do with your eternity. They don't tell you the the things that has to do with your growth. The, 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 the particular type of growth they teach you has to do with the growth of the flesh. You know, to be successful. To be successful. That is the common thing they teach in church now. Success. And I, I have paid attention to a lot of ministers. Although there are some that still teaches the truth. I'm not going to doubt that. I have seen a lot that teach the truth still. But there are so many that they are focused has been only on success. How to be successful, how to be successful from this, how to be successful from that. None of them is talking about the growth in Christ. The factors that will affect you as a Christian, your pillars, things you need to make sure they are always in check. The Bible says in the book of, uh, I think that was in the book of Peter, First Peter or Second Peter, the first chapters. He talked about the, the essential things you have to do as a Christian, he says that if you do these things, you will not fall. That is what he says. And no one is teaching on this topic. No one is elaborating. In fact, that would be one of the topics I would like us to discuss in one of these days. That would be an elaborate topic. And it's going to show how deep it is, how, uh, how, how, how deep it is to grow. So I want us to talk about this organization. Yeah. When you, when you were saying that, something came up to my mind. We yes. know we're still talking about why they left. Yeah. A lot of people left because of the settings of the church, which you said rightly now. You know, uh, one thing about life is this. You can't cage people. No, you can't. You can only hold them for a certain amount of time. Now, when they, they, when they begin to see certain things that are not palatable, that are no more pleasing to them, they will leave. Now, not only that they will leave, they might leave unto damnation. You know, this topic we are discussing is something that people need to sit down to hear. The settings that we have today have really affected a lot of people. There are, okay, let me give, for example, a brother who is um, a kind of um, 
dresses in the worldly way. Let me use that word, worldly way. Um, comes to the church, and um, that is his own belief. That is his own settings. The moment he comes to the church, into the church, you are looking for a way to bend him, bend him to your own way. Are you getting it? And if you successfully do that, after a while, if you cannot cope with that, it's, it's possible he's going to leave. You know what I'm talking about? They are they why they left. You know, um, you talked about the church system. Which you, you use the word the church in quotes, which they use today. Um, and if you look at it very well, most people that are now doing worse things in the world are people that were once in Christ. Look at it very well. Mm -hmm. Some people now that are doing very horrible things, there are people who were once in Christ. Now, what made them leave? You're talking about, you know, I stated some things which you talked about, the church set is now, and it has really affected, you were once going to church, right? Of course. You were once a believer. I, I'm uh, still a believer, uh, but I, you, say you, were once, you were once in the church system, system, system the church yes, settings. Yes. And I, I guess this is your hymn book here. I guess <laughs> your hymn book. I believe you believe to one of these Pentecostal churches. Yeah. And um, so um, it's really affected. I know there were, there were things you saw. There were things you experienced. Mm. I could remember the time you were being embarrassed in the church that you want to break the church apart mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all those challenges you had then. Mm -hmm. if, if if it were not those things that made you leave, then it were part of the things that made you leave. That which which makes it a very 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 valid point that you are coming up with that the organization, the system, also can make one to depart. So I would want us to quickly touch those parts that we've listed. If you have other ones to bring. Oh, um, I I I I think we've not do enough justice to this uh, church system okay if you ask I, I, had, I had i had a reason why i said this okay right and i found out in my own personal studies that in most cases most of the people that has left the church has to do with this church system give or take let's 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 talk about a few things here right we have a monetary issue in, in the churches either you either you want to agree with me or not this is fact Okay, you can state in what in what ways. Okay. Now, there are, according to what I know, there are people that always want to justify the fact that they said, "Oh, as a Christian, you ought to be rich because the Bible says, he, uh, in order for you to escape poverty, Christ became poor so that you might become rich." A lot of people have taken that verse out of context, and they have cemented their own meaning to it. Hmm. Right. And interestingly, um, one of the things Jesus himself said is that blessed are the poor in heart. Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Sorry, not poor in heart. We say blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus himself also said in the book of Matthew, he said that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. Now, in many times, most people will think, oh, so because you have money now, you cannot go to heaven. No, that is not what it's saying. What it's telling you is, is Jesus is trying to make you understand the power that is behind the monetary system. And this is the system that the church has adopted. And it is killing the church seriously today. Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the God of wealth. You can't serve both of them. You have to come to a point and a, a, you have to come to a point where you understand that it is either God or you are serving mammon, one of the two. And this point is where many of our churches got to. They decided to mix the two together. Hmm. In in churches today, the church I used to attend before, I, I, I want, John, you were aware of this church, of how the church was scammed of over two billion naira. I ask myself, how did the church has two billion? This was before. Uh, I think that was during the time of President Jonathan. Prior before then. Even prior before President Jonathan. Prior, was, it was. It, it was, was uh, Musa uh, Umar Musa Yarodo that was the president of Nigeria, right? Prior before then, let her. Oh before even, the, yeah, before that so it time. Was, it was even in the primitive time that we thought there that was that nothing. was during the time of Obasanjo, if I'm not mistaken. I will agree to that. And as of that time. Do, Naira has a lot of value. Yes. That it could have be oh, around about 10 billion, if not more, of today's currency in Nigeria, in, 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 in current Nigerian currency. Because Nigerian dollar money has fallen more than about times 7%, uh, seven times. So if it times two, 
times seven. That is about fourteen. Mm-hmm. About fourteen billion naira. They scammed. How can in today's money? How should how should the church has that kind of money? Why no not how why why and then we in the same church we have people that are that are they 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 are they are grinding. Hmm. They are being crushed by poverty. They barely eat. They barely feed. They said, oh, in uh, uh, in order for you to... Uh, I could remember one of the days when I, I was still attending this church. I'm not co- co- condemning the church. I'm just condemning the system. Um, I'd been a worker in the church. Everyone in the church knows me. They know everything about me. I've always been, you know. So there was one time I we experienced a fire outbreak in my house. All my property was burnt. I had nothing, right? The clothes I wore to church was even given to me by someone. <laughs> I came to give a testimony of how God just saved me that right because I almost fell into the fire and I still have the mark on my leg today. And normally, people had advised me that, oh, go to the church. They are supposed to cater for you since you are a worker in the church. And I went to the church. Do you know what they told me? I was told that because I don't go to home fellowship, that I am not entitled <laughs> to, to Do you support. know this can make you leave? Of course, and and you see, discussion is becoming more reasonable. You can go on, but I I never got offended because of that. I was just perplexed. I was like, but you guys, I've always been here. I've been I've been in the service to this church for how many how long? I've always there has never been any time that there is um there is uh any 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 difficulties that has to do with the media department because I was in the media department. There has, I have not given my all in every vigil in every time they needed me i'm always there because there are sometimes i wasn't there because of one thing or the other but most of the time i've always been there so when it came to time to render assistance these guys just they closed their ears as if i didn't exist as of that i didn't i didn't i didn't pick offense to, to be honest i didn't pick offense as of that time i was just like ah but these guys know me not that they don't know me say because you're not coming to home fellowship but i'm coming to church I'm a worker in the church. I always attended the workers' program. I'm registered as a worker in the church, but because I'm not going to home fellowship, so I, I just I said, okay, let's let's leave this whole thing there. And another thing again is this, right? We keep they keep telling the people when any time they came to church, you no, know, now it is time for us to give our tithe and offering. It's more or less like it is being mandated. It is no longer a thing of oh. It is uh, your option. One would argue that, ah, but they, they never tell you that you should come and force people to put it. No, they don't have to tell you that, right? When you when you have a, a whole section in a church setting that is dedicated for people to come and donate from their pockets, it means that your God is hungry. It's as simple as that. Let's just, just be realistic. It means that your God need a Netflix subscription plan and they have to keep paying for it. And this is not biblical. What does Jesus say? The Bible says that freely you have received, freely you shall give. It has nothing to do about money. And one would still argue that, hey, but they needed the money for, for the church to keep going. No. 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 We were human beings before we became um, a, a church goer. Right? Each people has their own business. If it is all about you receiving the gospel, Having been taught the truth, and now you cannot stand on your own. You by yourself will stand up and go and preach to another person. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has the business they were doing before, and if someone was doing a business that is unrighteous, as time goes on, they will drop that their, their unrighteous business and look for something else to do. But today, it is quite the opposite. There are more people. There are more poverty in the churches than uh, than people that are not going to church it is not because god does not provide blessings to people it is because people as they they manipulated the system and to make people think it is all about money all about money and this has caused a a, 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 a an opera if you go on the internet and check about people that are bashing christianity this is the aspect they usually focus on more and it has nothing to do with christianity it just has everything to do with the greed of men because there has never been any place in the bible where this is mandated <laughs> check the case of jesus for example if you read in luke chapter 6 it talks about how there are people that of their own will and accord decided to donate into, into the ministry of Jesus. It's not money they were giving him. They give the Bible said they give out of their substances, which include probably clothes and food and sandals and all these things. And Jesus accepted it from them. 
But in today, our Geo is driving private, uh, flying private jets. They are buying Rolls Royce. They are buying different kinds of car, building different kinds of more church building and more church program. And they are bu- they are buying more lands to do more crusade. Why the people they are they are bringing to the crusade are, are they are they are they are they are drowning in poverty and in debt, and they, there is nothing the church is doing about it. Mm. And this, this is this is realistic. This, I, I, this is very I, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. This is realistic, and it has nothing to do with Christianity. And this is, I, this is something I always tell people. Like, look, if your geo is here, I will tell it, I will tell it to, him, to his face. I, I'm not the type of person that say respect Papa. I'm not respecting any Papa. The Bible said that there is only one Papa, and that is God. Say, call no man upon uh, upon the earth, your Father. There is one Father that you have, wherein he is in heaven. That is who he is, right? And I would not, uh, I would be respectful to my elders. I would never disrespect an elder because that is a curse if you do that. But that does not mean, that does not give the elder the legal rights to change the gospel of Christ to his own personal wealth. I would never allow that. I will always tell you down to your face that even if your papa is here, I will tell him the truth. It doesn't matter what he has. He has the highest security force in the world. They will tell, to be honest, they will preach to you. Now, their, their lifestyle has made people to believe less in the spirituality and the capability of Jesus Christ. When they tell you that they are the geo, they are the most anointed people, they will preach to you in the churches that they are guided by angels. On their way home, you will see like different escort security guard that is following them. Is it the angel? Is it police? Uh, Nigerian police officer that is now there? Uh, there, are, there are angelic entities that is guiding them. This is true. It, this is fact. There is just only few uh, ministers in Nigeria that I, I they didn't find out with, which is one of them is Dr. Dicky Olukoya. That one, that man is the only one that I know is not, his own life is just street. He's, uh, he's so far that I can point out that this one is different. Dr. Dicky Olukoya of the MFM uh, ministry. Yes. So when we when, when we when we bring it back to every other of these ones, they have their private jet. They have their house is the finest, and look at. And some of them will give different excuses to the reason why they keep extorting you. There was a video I was watching about Kenneth Copeland, when he was talking about someone was um, challenging him of how he's living an exorbitant life as a Christian. Normally, if you're rich, that does not mean that because you're a Christian does not mean you are supposed to be in poverty. No, if you're rich, you're rich. It's your money that you work for. No one is disputing that. But what I'm against is this organization in the name of churches extorting people, taking their ad and money and enriching and empowering themselves. And then they are, bla- they, are, they, are they are crediting it to God that God has made them prosper. Which God? Was it not our one church in Nigeria Sack their pastor because the pastor was not bringing enough, enough, not enough revenue was coming in. That was the only reason they sacked the pastor because it was not fruitful. What kind of fruitful are you talking about? Is it about the spiritual fruitfulness or is it about the cash that is coming in? Is it the gospel of Christ or the gospel of Mammon? This is the question we need to ask. This is why I stopped going to church. But that does, I never left Christianity. I am a full blown Christian till I die and I will preach Christ till I die. But that organized church, I don't like it. So I, I, I needed to divert to that place and tell you how I, I, how I really felt <laughs> yeah, that about is, this. It's also one of the factors why people leave. You know, our it, top, I, our, I believe our, it's a major factor why people. Our has focus left. is still on why they left. Mm-hmm. You know, um, let me say something on what you just said. Particularly myself, mm. if I were to look at the church setting, something happened. <clears throat> I have to share this. I believe people are listening to us. Um, from different from different walks of life. And I want to say something on this. You know, I've been treated unfairly before. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I am aware. I could remember... You were one of the... We, were, we went to the same church. I, you were one of the few people in church that... The, the, the way they treated you in church, to, uh, to be honest, if not that you have been exposed to Christ long enough, many people would have picked serious offense years ago and have left and probably even lay us on them. But continue. I... I, I thank God I was able to confront the man of God. I won't mention the church. It's just like an assistant to the general overseer. I could remember I share an issue with you that mm-hmm. I was telling you I have an issue mm-hmm. and I need to be sought. Yeah, a health issue. Yeah, I went to the man of God. I told him that I'm growing up. This thing is affecting me. I'm not okay with it. And I've been a worker in the church. You know, that is what they used to justify if you're, if you're in Christ. <laughs> That is what people used to justify mm, if you're a worker. Your attendance to the church and all that. Now, when I got to him, 
please, please, those of you listening to us, I want you to know one thing. We are sharing this. Uh, you might be there. Probably you've left the faith or something because of these offenses. Mm. We we are still in Christ. We didn't leave. We didn't and leave. That's Jesus. why we are sharing this with yeah, you. We are you aware know, of the situation, and that is why we are trying. So wherever to you are now, pick up your bag, pick up everything you need to return back to God. Now, um, after sharing with him. I was shocked that years upon years I've been in the church, even to the point that people were insulting me that I don't have any job doing. Hmm. When I got to him, he told me to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital. I ran a test. The test alone was 20 something thousand to be run. I now told them that they should call my guard it up. Let me use that word. Hmm. The person that sent me here. Shocking to me when I called, the answer he gave was, ah, you people should collect money from him. Oh. We, I, I, we cannot do anything. You should pay. When I heard it, I was like, God, is this a church where I pay my tithe and offering? Where I labor day and night? So the Bible says, you know, most of the amount of the oils that treads the corn. Mm -hmm. We all are treading the corn and I cannot eat from the corn. When I heard that, I was pained. But because of God, I was quiet. I left it. I could remember periods where I don't have a shelter, where to stay. And the church decided to throw us out. We should go and look for wherever we stay. You know, I, 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 there are a lot of things that when I come up with that are too much to be said. So now I see from your heart, from your own point of view, how the organization, the settings too, can make people to leave. If it were by that, I would have left long ago. And But I remained because I know that I was serving a God. So that being said, uh, I would want to talk about this area of the system of the world, the mm. factor of the world system. You know, I was about saying that before you came in with the organization. Um, we've seen, you know, I need to say this because it's very important. You know, you and I know we've been friends for years now. And whatever we've been going through, we've been sharing it with each other. Mm. Like, literally, as I'm talking to you now, I don't have anything in my bank account, like nothing. Now, why am I saying this? God has not left me alone. I've still been eating. I'm still alive. But what I'm saying this is this. You know, the world system has really made a lot of people to begin to divert from what they believed at the first place. Now, you see a brother going to church. He sees another brother driving Jeep, building houses, doing this, doing that. Not knowing the source. Of where the money came from. Whether the person labored for it or whether the person got it mm. in the other way around. Now, why they left? Remember, that's our focus. Now, the, the, the brother that has not been into that kind of wealth or system begins to crave for what he's seen. Crave for it. I must get this. I'm in Christ. I want, this is my portion. God said I should occupy it. Like, if they begin to affirm certain things that they shouldn't affirm. The Bible says you lost. They I are lost. They begin to lost and desire these things. Now, I'm coming. How does this fall in? into the place of them living. Now, the moment they begin to thrive for these things, they begin to thrive and they're not getting it. They can go ahead to do anything to get it. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment they go and they begin to put, like, I'll tell you something, I literally told you that there are churches where there are occultic people there. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. So-called religious churches. <laughs> now, they, they, they do anything possible just to make sure that they get these things. And when it is not coming forth, you know what it is. If it's not coming for, they can go any mile to do what, whatever, whatever, just to make sure that they get, they get this thing. Now, the world system has really taken a lot of people from this, this, this faith, mm. this system we're talking about. They want to, they want to drive a car, they want to build a house, they want to be this, they want to be that, and because of that, when the forsaken comes, the Bible says, "Demas has forsaken me." I've been loved this place. Now the well. love for the world system now is why a lot of people are leaving. Hmm. Why they left? You can see one of the reasons why they left again. Mm -hmm. The 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 cravings, the factors and of the world system. That 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 uh, loving for the world system is something also that which it's part of the thing I wanted us to talk next and. The reason why I said I wanted us to talk it is this. Now, though, though we talked about um, how the church system is to be blamed in many situations of people and, and things that are happening to them. And no doubt, like I said, no doubt, I totally agree with that. And I am going to be one person that would tell you that I don't like an organized church. There is one also one factor also that we also need to consider, and this is important, 
right? And the reason why I say it is important is this. Okay. Um, check this thing. Check this thing out, right? There are people that came to church seeking miracle, mm. right? And in some cases, when they get this miracle, they started attending the church. Yeah. They, they are convinced that the Spirit of God is here. Yes. But they never get to know God. Probably the miracle they came, they saw one. They are there for the magic show that they are seeing. The, the aggrandizement. The, the 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 ringmaster's shoe. They like what they are seeing. Ah, the, our church. You become our church. Our pastor. Hey, I'm fire. Our pastor. Now this. Our pastor is that. They never get to know Christ. Hmm. And they they came to the worship of men. But one thing with that I've known so far is men will always disappoint you. Yes. Back into the world system. This type of people are the type that are easy to face the world system because they were never transformed in the first place. So when they see other brothers in the church that are progressing in the financial aspects, it is easier for them to cook up an excuse and a reason or not just cook up an excuse. There will always be a quick reason. Those are the type of people that the devil always like to use to bring them out of the church system. When they go out of the church, they will eventually be the same person that will criticize the church system and say they are no longer a Christian, they are now atheists. That they believe that the church is this, this, they speak a lot of things about the church, some true, others are pure fabrication because they never get to know Christ. Mm. Do you understand? And we've had a situation and scenario of this. I've met a lot of people that they told me that, oh, that they are no longer Christians. I said, what happened? They said, oh, I'm now an atheist. I don't believe in God. That this, that. Okay, what led to your atheism? By the time many of them will give um, their, their, their two bits, why they left Christianity. It is, now, here, here's the problem. It is either it's because they were offended in church Something transpire in the church, probably molestation, or because that one is another aspect I would like us to talk about. Um, um, molestation, uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, someone, you know, indecent things that happen in the church, or it is either the case of the organization trying to extort money from the people. That's what I always come to. Or it's, it's going to be that the people say, oh, that they, they met someone that, you know, that opened their eyes. That's the word they use. They opened their eyes. And then when you find out that in the long run, none of them will ever say, oh, it is because after I give my life to Christ and I've met Jesus and I've encountered the Holy Spirit, I discovered that this whole thing was just fake. You will never hear any of them say that. <laughs> never. They never even got to the point where they became born again. There was a lady I read a post on Facebook. I've forgotten her name. So she talked about how she was attending a particular church, right? And how she has devoted her life to Christianity. And many of the things she was talking about, none of it has anything to do with spiritual uh, growth. Now, in her own claim, she claimed that she was doing everything just to draw close to God, everything the church has to do just to draw close to God, just to know God, that she was failing in her exam. I'm like, why would you fail your exam? It's not the church that is that sustains you. It is the word. It is Christ. Your duty is to God, not to the church. Your service is to God, not to church. When it is time for your studies, go and study. You can't leave studies and be going to pray. You will fail. You will fail. <laughs> that is definitely true. Are you getting it? So she, she complained bitterly of how the church is a scam. On true, true, there is a lot of churches that has come. I will not doubt that. <laughs> and now she said, Oh, now that she has found a new religion, that she said she came to a conclusion and said that all religion is scam, which I will not agree with that. Um, the greatest scam is science, but that's a dis- another discussion for another time. Um, that she said, um, uh, that all religion is scam, that um, now that the religion she she is following is Jainism. Jainism is the religion of humanity where, you know, do unto others what they want to do to you, helping humanity. That's the facade. But if you go into Jainism, you find that Jainism is just 
another or... another type of a uh, neo Nazi um, uh, religion which has to do with the Nazi people. It's interesting. Even go and check the logo of Jainism. It's the Iron Cross, which is the cross of uh, of the Nazi of Adolf Hitler and his uh, Nazi group. So that's something else entirely. Back to what I was saying about the, this matter, right? That the people they never really get to meet Christ. They never became a true follower of Christ. The and some of them will say, oh, that they've met some Christians that say that they never became a Christian, they never received the Holy Spirit. Ask them, did you receive the Holy Spirit? They will say they will not, they will tell you no. So how how can you be a Christian if you don't have the Holy Spirit? Mm. So they never experienced the thing. They followed the crowd and the facade and they just follow what they've been taught or what they had. And then in the long run, when they find out that there is no way in that, instead of them to examine their life and see that what is wrong with me, am I uh, taking this thing the way I ought to take it or I'm just following a religious footstep, they come to the conclusion of, um, ah, Christianity is fake, let's just leave. That's it. Oh, because it's all people, they later get frustrated and they leave. That's it. That's basi- that's basically they just leave, and so that's one of the reasons why they leave too. Yeah, it is the reason they never became a follower of Christ in the first mm. place. Um, they remember the case of Jesus when Jesus was having the seventy-two disciples, twelve and seventy-two, right? When he told them that he told them the truth, he said, "Except you eat my flesh and drink my, my blood, blood, that is where <laughs> salvation comes in. Different. Being born again. Except you do that, you have no life in you." What happened? Seventy-two said no. That what is this madman saying? How will, will we hit you your see flesh one of and they left your because blood? They couldn't, they, they couldn't be here. They could not come to the point of being born again. They left him, the twelve. And Jesus turned to the twelve and said, Ah, you two are still here. You don't go. He said, Well, we will go. You are the one that had the words of life. Twelve understand that this person is speaking from the source of life. But the oh. remaining the remaining 72, all they had is eat flesh and drink blood. Not knowing that they are not eating physical flesh and drinking physical blood. Because that is even against the law of God in Judaism. But Jesus was speaking to them figuratively. So they left. And this is the case we have in church. Many people come to church not understanding what Christianity is about. And some of them, they refuse to be taught. They refuse to be bended. There are people that you are teaching them the Bible. They would rather hold to their own opinion and understand what the Bible is trying to tell you. They will, they will want the Bible to say what they want, not what the Bible wants to teach. Mm. And we have people like that. I don't know if you get it. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring that out there. We've talked about the world system. And I needed to point out to those people also that are part of the world system, but their own is hiding. Why right? they are hiding themselves under the canopy of, um, uh, no, I'm, I'm a... I'm a I've been a Christian before, but uh, this Christianity thing is all scam. You know, Jesus does not exist. And many of these people have engaged in fierce debates with them. Like, okay, let's debate if Jesus doesn't exist. They can't give a factual argument that Jesus does, does not exist. They cannot do that. I've engaged in debates when it comes to, okay, how is Christianity fake? They think they are always talking about emotional feelings, things that they went through. Not the actual world. There are some that has gotten to a point of they can point from you certain scriptures that will benefit what they want to say and they will ignore every other part of the scripture that talks about. Mm. They will tell you, oh, your God is a genu- uh, uh, maniac God that, that causes genocide. And I ask them, do you know why, the, do you know why God um, asks that these people be killed? They say, no, they don't want to know. That why would... So if you don't want to know, then why are you complaining? <laughs> if you if if you have a reason you want to know why God killed these people, let us go. I will show you why they killed these people. Let's let use let's use uh, the 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 Canaanites for example. That they were all wiped out, but not not all of them were wiped out. God commanded that every one of them be killed. The Canaanites, we are people that are known for Baal worship. They carry infant child that that has, that has just been born. A newborn baby, a, a few days old baby, will be taken to the altar of Val, and the baby that is alive will be thrown into furnace, hot fire, and the baby will be killed. And this is something that God hates. Why will you do that? So, so since you people are participating in this, and before God will destroy them, He always sends warning. He has sent warning multiple times, and they refuse. So he sent these people, we are going to destroy them. And what did God tell the Israelites? He said, if you participate in this thing also, I will do it to the same thing to you. When they started doing it, God did it to them as well. 
they went into slavery. They were taken away from their land. They were driven away from their land, and they became, they became slaves to other nations. Mm-hmm. So God is not partial with His judgment. It's not because of oh, we are Israel, we are people of God. Therefore, if we do it, God is only support. No, even if you if you do what is wrong, if you do what those people are doing, that will make God to wipe them. God will wipe you out too. Mm-hmm. When the when the Israelites came into um, when they left the land of Egypt and God was destroying their enemy. When the people begin to rebel in the camp and started worshiping other God, what did God do? God wiped them off. The wiped off he wiped, the exactly. It's not because he's jealous. It's because it's law. If you want God into your life, he will give you his rule. Joshua chapter 1. Mm. This is the rule of God. It, this is what, this is my rule. And my benefit comes this way. If you follow my benefits, these are the blessings that follows you automatically. The Bible said in the book of Psalm chapter 1 verse 1, Blessed is, is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. People don't understand. He said a man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly is blessed already. Blessed is he. Mm. So, we have that case. I needed to point it out. Of people that refuse to become born again. They go to church. They live in their sinful life. When they kids, they drink, they do all these kind of things, and they call themselves when, when, when Christians. The pressure, when the pressure then comes, it takes when the them. pressure comes, they turn back and say Christianity is false. Yeah. They never became Christian in the first place. Yeah. So, um, thank you very much for giving me a privilege to come in once again. Uh, it's really been interesting. I didn't need to you know, go this deep. <laughs> and um, just based on what you said now, I never took it that way, but you really made a sense. If you are not growing, Onto something you're growing onto on one other thing. Yeah, like you said, you know, you're growing into decay. If you're not growing into God. You're going growing. You're growing towards something. You're growing to decay, mm. and that is what makes you too. Now, um, when you said that, another factor struck my mind. You see that factors are coming up. Mm-hmm. The factor of offenses. That that's that's another one. That and I thank God for you. You have always um, pointed my attention towards that. There was one day we were having a discussion and you said that you showed me that was it's been years ago you said that offenses will come you always emphasize on that scripture and eventually as time goes i begin to understand it even much more better and i'm going to give god glory for you not that i've not seen that you know there are times you read the bible and you have understanding that god wants you to understand another person will read the bible god will open their eyes and they can come to tell you that oh Look, look at what I found. You will find out that it is something you've read before, but you will not well, get the light. Is, yes. So when you said that, I started paying close attention to what you said. And I found that there's truly offenses will come. There are people that has left church because of offenses. Yes. A lot of people. Serious offenses. I mean, <laughs> I could remember, um, you know, there's some, when I say offenses, offenses of even go the little ones. Mm-hmm. You know, that is why when you're talking about church, I was mute, but I have to say something now. You know, church has tried to bend people, as, as I told you. Yes, it did. They've tried bending people, but it's not working. Imagine somebody wants to marry his own way, which is it would probably might be God's way. Mm. But you want that person to marry the church, the organization's way. And, and by the way, which is wrong, right? And it's you know, wrong. this can bring about offense. Oh, we, we, we know of a brother that left the church because of a, that. A prayer warrior, mm-hmm. severe prayer warrior that left because he, he said, Give me this woman, I won't marry this woman. And they, they, they wanted to start investigating someone's marriage. Mm-hmm. They wanted to start doing things that they shouldn't do. The person left the church. There are a lot of people that has even left church because of the issue of uh, marriage. And that is this thing came now from offenses. Yes. When they were being offended, they had to leave. Yes. So um, let me touch this play, this part a little. You know, that is why the Bible said our offenses will come. Yes. But they say there's a war. Onto that man. Bible so those that have the war are the ones that are going to suffer it most. Because these people that are living, they are going to be accounted for. Yes, they will. Because you that is listening to me now. Oh, you may th- be th- there was something I was even saying the other day that many people have forgotten because people are she- uh, because you are a shepherd of sheep. And you think you can just talk or do things anyhow you please. You don't understand that God does not take lightly those who hurt his sheep. Yes. God is not is not a, a God is not um um a how do I say this? Um, um the kind of God that you just you know you do as you please to. Right? If one person go to hell because of you, you're going to pay for it. He said, Don't offend these little ones. Now this imagine that is why a lot of people don't know the the rule and the dangers it means to be the leader of a church. Mm. Imagine a whole church is being offended, offended God because of your own uh, 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 stigma 
Because no. of what you said, this is what must happen because I've said it. And because of you, a lot of people have entered. You think God will take it lightly with you? That's a lot of people said, be not many teachers. Mm-hmm. But please no, continue what you said. So, in this area of offenses, please, uh, those of you listening to us, and you may be a pastor, you may be a follower, but majorly I want the pastors to hear this. You know, sometimes people offend people and they are bold to tell them. Something happened recently when I relocated to this vicinity. And I'm thank God I'm now close to the studio. So I'll be coming around. So <laughs> something happened. I walked up to an elderly person because those that are elder in the church, they believe they know it all. They believe they have it all. So I walked up to an elder. I told the elder, why are you people letting the youths go out of the church? Why are you letting the youths leave the face of God and going into something else? They said, they said, they said that um, the reason is um, they don't want to follow their own. They don't want to be bended. Now, if the youths are not willing to be bended, the question is, in what area are you bending them? Where are you bending them to? Are you bending them to the area that is good? Are you bending them to the area that they will love? You know, sometimes I keep saying this, that offenses are going to take a lot of people to hell. Yes. I don't know if you remember when we gave our life to Christ newly. I said that God told me that the last days, what will take a lot of people to hell is offenses. Mm-hmm. I remember. I, I told that you was that what that I was referencing. And if you look at it these last days, a lot of offenses are coming up. Hmm. Serious offenses. And the, 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 the part which we are discussing now is the delicate part. It is making people to leave. Hmm. People are leaving the faith. I remember a brother that came back from school. We all were in the church together before. He's studying and he's about running up his program. So when he came back, now, if he, if he comes back from school and he has need, are you expecting him to go to the people of the world? Are you expecting him to start going to bad friends and ask for money? Now, when he came to the church, the church played him and played him. And he went to one of the members of the church. He went to him. Based on what he told me, he said he sat down in the parlor for hours. The man left him there and went inside. But he has the money, he has mansion, his children are going, as I'm seeing, planning that the children should go abroad to study. Mm. Now, if he had told his brother that, ah, I don't have. That would have been something. He I left him in see. the parlor for, for luck. You know, this thing we are saying, some of you might feel like maybe we are rising up against anybody or people. No, we are, we, are, we, are, we are only talking to those whom we know that will have need of this thing. You know, some of you will not have need of it. You feel you are ancient of days, you've outgrown these things. And you will later come back to it, I know. You yeah. definitely, because you too might have been offended yeah. in one way or the other. Now, based on this area of offense, it's one of the factors why people are leaving. I think offenses have really made a lot of people too. Like a man died recently. Hmm. A man died recently. A, a man, I call him Apollos. Yeah, I, I was even, yesterday when you came to my side, I wanted to remind you that, oh, I remembered of this man who we used to call Apollos. I just remember the man. Now, do you know what happened? <laughs> yes. This man, uh, you know, he was, at a point he was not working. He was not a worker in the church anymore. Yeah, I, saw I was I asking, had. what happened? He now told me what pastor did to him. Now, that is offense. Mm. He kept that offense. He died. Mm-hmm. Now, he was not working for the church. He, he stopped being a worker. I went to him and I said, you are filled with the scriptures and everything. Why do you decide not? Why do you have this decision that you don't want to work for the church? You don't want to even serve God. Now, I work for God. He said, he now narrated the offense to me. And when I look at it, you know, this thing is liable of pushing more people out mm. of the church, just like he did to you. Because you have been, you have been, you have been embarrassed. You have been harassed. You have even even been like what you didn't do. They said you I, wanted I to do. I remember when the the, the, the the In fact, let me just not go there. So <laughs> that is that is it. Th- these are the areas. I have to come into my head. <laughs> yes, yes. These are the areas. So my those that are listening to us out there, offenses too are one of the things that made people they have left the faith. And it will not be good if we don't discuss how they can return and the, the, the remedies to these things. Yes. So um I want to crown my own apart from the area of the offenses I'm talking about, mm. I want to crown it up to the failures of individuals. Failures of individuals are also one of the reasons why people are living. Um please you permit me to say this. You permit me to say this. Um do you know that a lot of people, their failures have made them to leave the faith? Yes. Failures have made them to leave the faith. Failures in their duties. A lot of people have taken the faith as a place where you come and build a house and sleep in it. No. God created the world for six days mm-hmm. and he rested on, on the seventh. seventh day. Now, do you know that a lot of people are suffering poverty today because they are lazy? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you why they left. Some people left because of this little, this media thing I'm telling you now. A brother that doesn't have money has been frustrated in all his life 
expecting the the, the the settings of the church to help him mm. to become rich. And if they don't pay attention to him, before you know it, he becomes offended and he leaves the church. Now, why do I say people's failure makes them leave the, makes them leave the faith or the, the settings? Is this. Now, God has given you six days to labor. Mm -hmm. Six days to labor. And he's telling you to come on that seventh day, which is the Sabbath. That is the day that... I'm not saying that you should not give God for fellowship or worship in other days. No. Him. He's telling you that go for these six days. Go and labor so that you have enough. The seventh day, come to me. Come to me on that seventh day and give me worship. Give me that worship. So, the worship is important. In this area of worship, we should be able to, to note that this um this part of uh, this part of it is really killing a lot. When you fail, you now you now lay the blame on um you lay the blame on everybody, lay the blame on pastor, mm. you lay the blame on your friends. Well, you you've forgotten the fact that you yourself, Allah you, you, you failed you to work. So you know failure, like I thank God for my life. You know, there are a lot of you see, you see, friend, I, I am happy that I'm in this studio with you today. Most time I've I've the, the other time I was shedding tears because of my failure to attend to certain things in mm. life which really affected me but if not i've been grounded in god i would have left the faith mm. failure to do your I started, job and started looking for things you know that is not, that god is said i will bless the work of your hand mm -hmm. now when it comes to you every time he's not seen anything in your hand <laughs> today he's seeing you are carrying pong pong. tomorrow he's seeing you are you are you are you are you are washing clothes next tomorrow he's seeing you are doing this you are, doing, you are jack of all trade you have nothing you're doing now even being jack of all trade is even better yes, than somebody that doesn't you have, have anything you, you have things you, you can do it. but then when god comes he says ah this is what i find is let me go back and multiply something but when he comes back he says another one so which one am i going to i even believe if you are even a jack of all trade it's even better better off than you can always find yourself in any field and excel it, it boils down to people that you know when others are thinking of okay how do we multiply the little one that we have while they are thinking of that your own you're not there you'll be talking can newspaper the newspaper sport is where you are arguing about how buhari how is not because you don't to have anything doing and if you look at it at the long when it run, comes to football you are the one your voices will be the loudest but yeah. when it's time for you to go and work to get money the bible says why the evil days come not mm -hmm. not the years draw draw nine. Nine. when thou shall say I have no pleasure. Now, a time will come in your life. I'm just quoting this. I may, I may be out of context. Mm. A time will come whereby you will not be able to have desires. Your aspirations for certain things will be, will be down. Then you will not look and be looking for a magic. You will not be expecting a miracle to become what which, you're supposed to be. Network. And you know that in this way, the person can leave mm -hmm. the faith. faith. So this and and those people now, that is the period whereby desperation comes in. Mm. Aspiration is gone. Desperation is now what comes in. You know, before you were aspiring, I will do this, I will do mm -hmm. that. But the, the time you're supposed to be doing that, you are using it for something else. This thing I'm telling is very important. And a lot of people now have left the faith because of this. The time you're supposed to be in your place of work, laboring, hitting the irons together, joining the metals, operating the computers, packing the sand, joining things together, you are in the church saying you are praying. Mm. Or you are doing one another. Or maybe you are cumbersome with certain things. Then at the end of it, you discover that you are not where you should reach. Before you know it, you start bringing some offense. You start bringing yeah. some kind of. Before you know it, you said that is why some people today they're into they're into rituals. Mm -hmm. They want to do anything possible to just money. to get it. Let me let me cite the place in the Bible far around it up. You can see this um, Simon the Tena. I don't know if it's Simon the Tena or Simon the Sorcerer. Mm, Simon the Sorcerer. These people, you know, when they when they, they they had the time, they could have worked and labored. I know you might have not had it this way, or you might have not been given to it this way before. They had the time to labor and get what to eat, but rather they were using it for something else. Then at the end, what they now have to do is to go into divination, into sorcery. Now that is it. That it is dangerous when you ought to be doing what is right to keep you in the faith. You are not doing it. At the long run, it will remove you. That is why people left. So I'll, this is the last point I'm giving for today. Why people left? You know, I talk about the unity factor, mm -hmm. the fellowship factor, the world system factor. I talked about. Um, We've talked about the church system. Um, I also talk about uh, the offense, mm -hmm. the offense factor, and now I I, I talked about um, this this factor of individual failure. Indi individual These failure. things are enough for somebody to 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 see why a lot of people left the faith mm -hmm. you, you know i didn't i didn't really hit on the area of the unity mm -hmm. you know when people are scattered he said united we stand divided divided before and when things fall apart the center cannot hold again mm -hmm. and this 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 is actually telling you, you know when two things fall apart they depart mm -hmm. so when there's no when there's no unity there is division 
and you get it. So yeah. that is where I want to. Jones, I don't know. Thank I, you very I am, much. I am so glad for this particular podcast. And in fact, I I really heard out my I I speak out how it is paining me in my heart. Oh, I good. I never knew I was it, it is paining me this much. Not because I'm angry at anyone, but because I am seeing a lot of people that is supposed to be carrying the banner for God. They are living the faith because of all these things that these men are doing in the name of Christ. They are sub- subjecting people to their own kind of lifestyle and not pushing them to become what God wants them to become. Mm. And also talking about how people in their own life, personal life, has failed uh, because they they refuse to make he white sun still shine. Yeah, and it's it's not good. Thank God we still have our youth and our strength to re- correct a lot of mistakes yes, and errors yes, in yes, our yes, life. Yes. So with that being said, John, I would like us to I would like you to give a word of encouragement and with that we will close um the the podcast. Wow, thank you very much. Uh, be ready. <laughs> be a Christian uh, radio as well as being in a place I want to be and I'm happy to be in the studio today. Um like what I said earlier, that it won't be good that at the end of all this there is no um word of encouragement for people to learn from. Um for those who have left, I would advise you to come back. You don't have to come back to a physical building of a church, by the way. Yes, return back All to God. You need to return back to God first. You I want you to it. emphasize on that because there are people like me that will, I'm even thinking of start going to church. Now, if I'm still, I'm start going, I'm not going to be any worker. My goal is to go to church and look for people that I will tell the truth so yes. that they can kick me away from that church again. <laughs> <laughs> you have intentions, sir. It's good to be intentional, you know. Yeah. It's good to be intentional. So, um, don't look at what has been done to you before. Don't look at offenses, and also you need to know that you have also you have also failed in some areas. You know when you tell yourself the truth, you hold back the truth, but the truth you hold from yourself keeps you away from itself. So you should be able to know that you too you have your faults in this. Why you left? Are you getting it? Look at that building, that church building where you joined before. A lot of people are happy to see you. Whenever you come around, somebody's praying ninety percent, it turns it to hundred. You know, sometimes our presence in the church, in the in the in the in the gathering helps a lot of people. You know. The Bible said that when, when Jacob saw the wagons and everything, he was strengthened. He strengthened himself. He stood up. He couldn't stand up before. He was strengthened. Why? The things he saw. Sometimes your presence around people really help them. So I will tell you as a youth in the areas you have failed. You should quickly cover them up. Life has no second edition in co- to correct it. Mm. So be careful in writing every page. Why you left? I don't know why you left. You might have reasons why you left. Even me that I'm talking might be the reason why you left. Mm. <laughs> you know. So there is need for you. The Bible says, "Return, O backs leading Israel." Mm-hmm. Do not look at what anybody to like. What my friend said, you are not returning back to a church setting because offenses are bound there. Yes. You yes. might even go back and receive the double double of what you received before. <laughs> so when you return back to God, then when you go back to the settings, I don't think anything that they do to you will be able to, of course, or will be able to hurt you and affect you. So um, keep that is why it's always important that when you're returning, make sure you are returning to God and not yes. the church settings. Go to God, not the church settings. Let the Bible be your foundation. Let it be your yes. modu operandi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are yeah. pressing by. I don't know what you might have done, whatever wrong you might have done. Maybe you've aborted baby, you've done a lot of things, you've killed people, you've murdered, you've stolen. Whatever you might have done, just look away from it. The blood of Jesus is already there for you. All you need to do is to return back home. God bless you. Thank you very much. I hook up here. Thank uh, you. All right. Thank you, John, for coming on the podcast. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's it's a, pleasure. a good pleasure. It's, 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 I, am, I am happy that you came. So, um, with that being said, we're going to bring the podcast to an end. And please make sure to tune in. As of the time you may be listening to this, it, as of the time you may be listening to this, um, the other podcast might have been on because I'm planning on recording a podcast, a conspiracy podcast about um, COVID-19. Now, this is very important that we talk about this because my friend came and he said, look, we have to talk about this. And I'm like, yeah, we need to talk about this. So I would like us to um, just, I don't do this on the podcast, but let's just bow our head for a little bit of prayer. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, it won't cost you anything. It will just, um, it costs you nothing, just a little bit of time. Now, um, you go this way and you talk to God yourself. Just tell him, ask him, tell him to come back. If you've gone far away from him, tell him I'm sorry 
I didn't meant to do this. This is what I was going through in my life and I'm sorry I never brought this to you. There are some times that we go through a lot of pains, a lot of hurts that other people has done to us. Now, instead of us to carry it to God and tell God that, look, this is what I am going through. Because the Bible says, cast your care upon him for he cares for you. Yes, God cares for you, right? There are many times we go through these things, but we don't know the things the Bible says. And we store them in our heart instead of us to cast it on God and say, God, look at what this person did to me. Look at what this person did to me. I don't want to hold grudge against this person because I know it is not right. But I am in pain. I am in hurt. God, give me peace. If you do that, you will see peace. You have fellowship with God. Many of you don't know how much access you have to God, how much power and miracle you can do in God. It is really easy. All you have to do is ask. And that is just it. God will always come for you. Talk to him. Tell him you're sorry. Tell him to restitute you, that you want to restitute of everything you've done that has offended him. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And amen. With that being said, we're going to bring the podcast to an end. Please make sure you share this with your friend we are not doing this for money i have a youtube channel but i didn't monetize it and i'm not going to monetize it <laughs> and i have a reason why because um the mammon if you started doing um anything for money most especially the work of god before you know the spirit will take over you so the best way is in this your poverty in the poverty that you are that's the best way you can serve god let me just be honest with you if you think that when you have money is when you can serve god i lie I used to think that before. Now nah, lie. <laughs> uh, I will explain that in one of the podcasts. I know many of you will not understand. With that being said, my name remains Joseph. Have a blessed one.